As Photoshop celebrates its 25th anniversary, I think it's worth the time to look back and see some of the roots of the tools that you use every day in Photoshop. For a lot of you, you may have never seen a traditional darkroom. This is where the black and white process has been done for a long time. I'm Conrad Eek, and I've been doing professional darkroom work for over 40 years. What we're doing is making a black and white print. And in the old days, bridge was a contact sheet where you'd take your negatives and make essentially thumbnails of those. You'd study the thumbnails to decide which ones were worth enlarging. We've already done several tests to get to where we are right now. And with this image, I'm kind of zeroing in on what would be a final print. We're gonna start with a base exposure that I've determined is pretty good for the entire area of the image. And while I'm making that base exposure, I'm gonna dodge part of the image. Uh, dodging, I'm sure you've seen the uh, dodge tool in Photoshop. Um, it looks somewhat like this. Uh, it's just a piece of wire. I've used a piece of black tape to cut out the shape of the area I wanna dodge. And technically what we do when we dodge is we selectively reduce the amount of light that hits the paper. What that does, if you reduce the exposure, cutting back the amount of light, you reduce the density of that area on the print. So we're dodging to lighten an area of the print. So I'm gonna start off with my 10 second base exposure and I'm gonna dodge for about two seconds of that in one area of the print. You count that off in your head going one Kodak, two Kodak. Okay, now that it's all, I've done the dodging and my base exposure, I want to do some burning and increase exposure. So I'm gonna add light to a couple of areas of the print to darken it. I'm sure you remember the, uh, the burning icon is the little shielded hand. And what I'm gonna do is block the light from the enlarger as I turn it on. And then I'm gonna get my hand in position and selectively add light. You know, sometimes this is more done intuitively and by feel. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is a gradated burn, which would be comparable to doing a, a levels adjustment with a gradation in your mask. I know this doesn't look like the gradient tool, but if you, it is black and white. And once again, I'm gonna do this just with a count in my head. And by bringing it down and back, what I did was create a gradient across the top of the paper. From here, we've finished our exposure. Now we go into the developer. And what the developer's doing is turning the exposed sil silver halide crystals into black metallic silver. This is what makes the image appear. There's not a comparable tool in Photoshop to this, and that's why I still like the magic of the darkroom. And here, the developing process, one of the things that I'm always struck by when I do traditional photography, I've grown very accustomed to seeing the result of my edits in real time in Photoshop. And as computers have gotten faster and faster, you don't have to wait for those little gray progress bars anymore. You know, when, when Photoshop first came, we were all, all of us in the industry were kind of going, yeah, right, like this is gonna change the way we work. While we're still working under the hum of the safe light, I wanna show you another thing that you wouldn't be able to see once we bring up the room lights. First, the version of the zoom tool for focus. Uh, this is actually a grain magnifier. It's got a magnifying glass, essentially, that looks through a mirror that is very precisely positioned to mimic the surface of the easel right here. And it enlarges the silver grains so that I can actually see them and focus them knowing that when the silver is in focus, the image is gonna be as sharp as possible. And we don't have a sharpening tool in the dark room, so exact focus is the most important thing that we can get. You can see this image here, we've got, I've, I've done tests on this, and the problem I have is the sky is way too bright in relation to the foreground. Uh, this happens a lot, particularly when you're shooting at altitude. This came from an image I shot in Colorado several years ago. Photoshop has amazing contrast control tools as you go from a color image to a black and white image. This would be a tremendously easy fix. We could just 
click a slider on the sky, the blue of the sky, and drag it to whatever tonality we wanted. If we were affecting something else in the image, we could just select that away and not change it. We can't do that in the dark room, but we do have a, a blunt instrument that accomplishes almost the same thing. I'm gonna take something to use as a spacer and place that right in the middle of the image, and then I'm gonna put a piece of white cardstock here, and I'm gonna create a burning mask. And so I'm just gonna trace along the edge of the tree line here. And think of this as a selection tool. I do most of my selecting using the pen tool, which can draw very accurately. Heaven knows there's, there's so many selection tools you can use in Photoshop. What we're gonna do with this when we're done in here is we're gonna go out and sit down at a table with an X-Acto knife, and we're very carefully gonna cut this mask out. Why look? Here's a perfectly cut burning mask. We'll take this mask and remembering what height we started, we'll start the exposure time, quickly bring that to the level, pull it in and then gently jiggle it and then bring it back up and out. And that little jiggling motion that you're doing there, that's equivalent to feathering the edge of a selection. Because what we're trying to do is we want to burn in the sky for almost twice the exposure that the, the, the foreground area has to get them to balance out well. But if we just hold this in place, we'll get probably get this little halo of either too dark on this part or too light in the sky. And so by going in and feathering it, it accomplishes just what you do by feathering a selection in Photoshop. So we're gonna go ahead and make that exposure and then we'll take a look at the results of the two images we've talked about. I wanted to share with you the results of the two images we altered through techniques that are now represented by Photoshop tools. Here you can see the first print, the work print that I had of the waterfall. You, there's really very little textural information down here in the whites. These areas are kind of blown out. You leak out the frame here where when we made the, ex and overall, it's just a little bit light. We made the adjustments and you can see it's got a little more punch just because we've darkened it. But I really like the sparkle in the grass here and we held on to that by the dodging that we did. In burning in the information here, it's almost like we used a recovery tool to recover highlight information that you'd like you do with a raw file because it was there on the negative, it was just quite dense. And then you can see in adding the gradation, we've brought a lot more strength to these leaves here that kind of hold in the corner. And we've really stopped that kind of bright white leak out to the side. So I think that were pretty successful edits. Going to the other one where we use the uh, burning mask, and you can see the exposure values in the foreground are really pretty good. We've got a good tonal range, a nice sense of light, but our sky is just a series of, of cotton puffs with no definition. So by carefully masking the foreground, we've left it exactly as it was, but then we've gone ahead and added a lot more density in the sky and a lot of textural information in the clouds that we didn't have before. And so what I would do on an image like this, if I like this, I would keep the mask and the negative and my notes on the process in a folder all together. So if I went back to repeat it, I could repeat it. It's a lot easier in Photoshop where once you get to the finished image, you it's Command S. Remember that Command S. You don't have to take notes. All your metadata is recorded. If you work in Lightroom, you don't even alter your original source file. It just has a little suitcase with all your data in it. You know, I have a dark room that was filled with pencil nubs from all the notes that I recorded. And as I go back and re-explore these old images, it's interesting to look at developers that I use that are no longer available, uh, all the changes that have happened. So I think the thing to me, the way I see Photoshop more than anything, at the beginning it was a little tool in my photographer's toolkit, and now it's one of the most powerful tools in my camera bag.